started a series called The Truth About. Okay, how many here have figured out now there's a difference between the second coming and the rapture? Amen. And the rapture could happen at any moment. We've discussed many a thing, how to renew your mind. We've talked about what man is, the truth about man's spirit, soul, and body. We talked about how the Antichrist is going to come. So today, it's the truth about success. I believe, and I believe you believe, and I believe the scripture teaches over and over and over again that those that walk with God are, become successful. So do you have any examples of that, Pastor Kerry? Well, let's take a look at Abraham. Yeah. Abraham was the wealthiest man in, in Asia. How about this guy that everybody kind of picks on, you know, Job? Did you know Job was the wealthiest man in his whole area? Now, these are people that hung out with God. And so this particular lesson is God wants us to know that he has a plan of success for each believer. He has a way in which we are to walk and a way in which we are to be with God so that he can promote the successes in our life. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I found out early in my walk that all my failures I did without God. <laughs> and with God, even some of my clumsy things turned out okay because wherever God is, things turn out all right. Can I have an amen? amen? So good morning to you. Let me encourage you to spend more time with God during this time. We see all kinds of crazy things. We think about the sicknesses and the illnesses that are going away, that, uh, the China virus thing, you know, and how it started to go away and people got confident and next thing you know, another big influx. But I want to tell you something. The Bible says we can take authority over the enemy. And the enemy is not, okay, the Lord. The enemy is sickness, death, disease, frustration, depression. So we can take authority over those things. But the key to our success is being focused on Jesus Christ. Someone say amen. amen. So welcome to this morning's briefing. We call it a briefing now. Hope you have something to follow along with. Today we're going to see God's perfect provision for his children and how to walk in the way Christ says to walk so we can find favor and success within God's kingdom. We are subjects to God's kingdom. We're no longer of this world, amen? We might be in the world, but not of the world. We're of a new kingdom. That kingdom came at Pentecost, and it came with all the fullness of God. And all we have to do is reach out and allow God to be God in our lives. Amen. So as Christians, it's a very important that we pay very close attention to the, our shepherd's voice. We pay very close attention to what he asks us to do, that we yoke up and we learn his ways. Why? Because his ways are ways of plenteous. His ways are ways of eternal life. And I much rather walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's this life. The valley of the shadow of death is the earth. It's full of death because of Satan and his fallen ones. When though we walk through it, we shall not fear of evil. Amen. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Now, so I believe God put all of that in the scripture for us to realize our insurance, Jesus Christ, mutual life. You understand? I believe that God has provided a way where Satan can't harass us as much as we think he can. Yeah. Satan does not have the key to your back door unless you give it to him yeah. by doing foolish things. The Bible says that we walk in the spirit, we shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So there's two of us. We discovered already there are two of us. There's the old you. If the old you was good, then you wouldn't need to be born again. But see, the old you is supposed to be dying away. Can you say amen? To cast off the old man. And we are to put on the new man. We are to walk in the newness of life in Christ Jesus. The Bible declares that you and I are two men. One is passing away. One is being renewed daily. And which one do we feed the most? Good. 
All right. We're going to read the scripture in Proverbs chapter 3. So if you'll take your Bible and go to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to pick up at verse 13. And in verse 13 through 18, let me say this to you. Wisdom is Jesus. Now, you might not know this, and I, I don't, you know, I, I just don't want to throw this out, but, you know, I like the fact that having an understanding of the word is very good for us because the pieces of the puzzle seem to come together and tell us the story of the great, greatest gift in the world, and that's Jesus Christ, so that we can have eternal life. Now, so if we're going to walk in wisdom, who are we going to walk in? Jesus Christ. If we're walking with, wis with wisdom, not in wisdom this time, with wisdom, who are we walking with? Jesus Christ. Now, in the Old Testament, you'll see a lot of things mentioned about how God visited his people. Now, we know that our father has a son, and there's a Holy Spirit. So there is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the person that you see active in the earth, in the Old Testament, who's called at times the angel of the Lord, also is the Son of God. And so when Joshua met the angel of the Lord on the way to battle, he bowed his face to the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the Lord, who happened to be at that time Jesus Christ, didn't tell him, get up, I'm just a man. No. And, and Joshua said something really strange. He says, are you with me? Are you with them? Are you with our enemies or are you with me? And Jesus said, neither. I'm with anyone who believes in me. Folks, the key to our walk of success is we have to believe in God more than other things. Can you say more than our circumstances? How many believe? God is more powerful than your circumstances. How many here believe God is more powerful than any kind of symptoms that come onto our body? He is, but we've got to put him first. We've got to really focus on who he is. So everybody that was involved with God in the Old Testament all prospered, all succeeded. Did they have problems? Oh yeah, many problems. Look at Samson. Every time he followed God, he succeeded. Every time he did his own thing, he failed. That's my, my string back there. Okay, so walking with wisdom here is really walking with Jesus Christ. It means listening to what he has to say. Walking in such a way that you understand what wisdom is telling you. So Proverbs uh, chapter 3, verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. Notice you have to look for it. How many here... Uh, you didn't, you weren't born again from your mother's womb, you know. You have to accept Jesus Christ. So you had to find him. You have to discover that Jesus Christ was the only answer. So, happy is the man that finds Jesus Christ. Okay? Finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding by it. For her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that you may desire. Listen to this. All the things that you may desire. Is that where you're at? Cannot be compared with her. Length of days is in his right hand. We're just going to change her to his right hand, to Jesus' right hand. And in Jesus' left hand are riches and honor. His ways or her ways are ways of plenteous, and all her paths are peace. Remember, we're putting Jesus there because he is wisdom. 18 says, and she is a tree of what? Now, folks, whether you know this or not, the Bible says in Isaiah 66 that you and I are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Say with that with me. Trees of righteousness. So God consider you his planting. He puts you in like trees. Trees of righteousness. And who makes us righteous? Jesus in our heart. So we're the planting of the Lord. Now, Psalms 1, say, keep the idea of tree in your mind. Psalms 1 says you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
and your leaf will not wither, and your fruit will bear itself in its season. And whatever you do will prosper, Psalms 1. Not only that, but Jesus said, you shall know a tree by the fruit it bears. So every human being is a type of tree, a planting of the Lord. Are they bearing evil fruit or are they bearing good fruit? For you will know a tree by the fruit it bears. Now, folks, you can look out briefly at the world and you can see who's bearing good fruit to God and who is not. Can I have an amen? So why would you want to hang around those that are not bearing any fruit or bad fruit at all? Hello? So in order to succeed, Psalms 1 says, we don't hang out in the way of sinners. Nor did we sit in the seat of the scornful. You know, in the way of sinners means you keep people from getting born again because of your poor testimony. Don't do that. Folks, let me just share this with you. I'm kind of mad a little bit. Moms and dads, your children are looking for moms and dads who love Jesus to change. They don't want to hear what you tell them. They want to see that you're no longer doing the dumb things you used to do, mom and dad. That was a hard lesson for me to learn with my kids. That they learn from, my, from watching me more than they hear from hearing me. So therefore, I need to be improving my walk. Every day before the Lord so my children see that this Jesus is just not the tooth fairy. Amen. Do you understand me here? Yes. Very important that you always get better every day. No matter what your age, you're working on getting better. And who's the one that makes us better? Jesus Christ. We're walking in wisdom. Amen. So happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding for her proceeds are more than you can even imagine. So a couple of points underneath that one. Okay, number one, we know here is wisdom. Wisdom is Christ Jesus. He's the second person of Godhead, the active member of the, the, the Trinity or the Godhead in the earth. Amen? All right, we must first find him and after that follow him. Walking and learning his ways. Number two, the wisdom, through wisdom, we gain understanding. And as we understand, we settle down and settle in on who we are in Christ. And through him, we then have access to the properties and the very favor that we need to succeed. Thirdly, so by walking with Christ, we learn his ways and how to do things and how not to. And by putting Christ first in our priorities, we become a success in whatever we do. Whatever you do shall prosper. You're that tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. And then fourthly, so you see, we can become a success if we allow, and this is the key, if we allow Jesus the right and the rule and reign in our life. Hello. He's got to have the steering wheel, the brakes, and the gas pedal. We've got to learn to trust him and let him do the driving. Can you say amen? And bless you guys that are coming in by the garage. All right, so my next point I want to make. Number one, first step in succession or to succeed is your priorities. What are our priorities? Now, we know the answer is, everybody likes that answer. Gee, God's our priorities first, right? Right, but see, how is that broken down, Pastor Kerry? Well, let me give this to you. At this time, pay close attention because if you get these all mixed up, you're going you're gonna to begin to collapse. These have to be in order in your priorities so that you can maintain a successful and a good, strong, solid walk. Amen. God wants us stable. Amen. He doesn't want us instable or, or tossed to and fro. All right, so what do you mean, Pastor Kerry? So, okay, priorities. Go with me, Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 through 3, very familiar scripture, but it's one that I think gets looked at too lightly. 
It needs to be focused on immensely. We have to learn to dwell on something like this to realize where we're exactly at in our walk with God. All right, so Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If you were raised with Christ, let me put it another way, if you are born again, then you're raised with Christ. Seek. Seek means to crave after, to go after with diligence. Seek means to crave and to go after with diligence. Hello, like a dog who's hungry. Huh? You, did you call me a dog? No, I didn't call you a dog. It's like anything that has something before their mind, they're going to really work hard to get towards it if they really want it bad enough, right? A baby with a rattle? Babies don't automatically love rattles, but you start rattling it and all of a sudden they want it. Isn't that how the enemy works? All right. So he says, if you can be raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set your priorities. That would fit there, wouldn't it? Set your mind or your priorities on things above not on things of the earth. For you died. What happened to our old man? Died. What happened to our old man? Died. died. So stop resurrecting it. Stop pampering it. Stop doing weird things with it. Because the longer you feed it, the more it will raise itself up and you'll become a walking zombie. That means a know-nothing that seems to walk around through the motions. People go to church like that. God forbid. Hello, we don't want that. We're going to be alert. You'll be the first one in, first one taking notes, first one really going after it, and you'll be the one that fool after it's all over with. How bad do you want it? See, all right, so let's go, let's kind of look at this. Okay, set your mind or your priorities on things above, for you died and your life is hidden. Say, my life is hidden with Christ in God. So where are you hiding? In Christ. in Christ, in God. Come on, don't leave half the package out. You are hidden in Christ, in God. So how does the devil get to find out where you're at? Is when you peek out like a Sasquatch. I'm just joking. When you start peering out and you start longing, you know, like what is it, Lot's wife turned into a pillar of salt because she turned around and longed to go back, like the Egyptian, excuse me, like the Israelites longed to go back to Egypt, forgetting all the oppression they went through for 400 years. And how often that we've been delivered and we have been placed hidden with Christ in God. And all of a sudden, periodically, if you don't keep your flesh crucified before the Lord on a daily basis, it will rise up and begin to peer to your back and begin to long for the old ways of living. If you're not careful, it will drag you down and open you up for attack. And God forbid, we don't want that. Can you say amen? amen. Do you remember when Jesus, they hated Jesus, he went into his hometown synagogue and he got up and he preached. He says, this day that scripture is fulfilled. What did they want to do with Jesus? They wanted to stone him, throw him off a cliff, didn't they? Could they touch him? Why not? You know, it not being God's time is a, good, is a good answer and is part of the answer. But they couldn't touch him unless he did something they could. So it works. That's, that's the answer. It wasn't God's time to be touched, to be crucified. But nevertheless... Nobody could touch him anywhere else until that time. Could you say amen? Now, let me ask you, is it God's will for you to be protected? Yes. Really? Convince me. Amen. Convince the devil. You see, that's where we're kind of falling a little short. Now, I'm not picking on anybody. Some of us are really good at resisting and submitting to God, and, and the devil runs from us. Others are not so good, and we need to be trained. Remember what we learned last week, how important it is to get to church and to be trained in the things of the gospel. Why? So that you can live a successful, stable, and fulfilled Christian life. Didn't Jesus say, I have come that you might have what? Life and have it more 
abundant. So did he lie to us? No, he didn't. So we need to find out how we can walk the way he's designed us to walk. Amen? And you say, well, I don't believe Pastor Kerry, a Christian can really walk in victory like that. Well, watch. Watch and learn. There are thousands of people all over the world doing it. But we don't hear about it because we got all the negative narratives going out there. I'm so amazed that Christians bound by fear today. They're so afraid of this and afraid of that, and God has not given us a spirit of fear. But it's not until you learn to spend quality time with God that all that stuff seems really strange and ludicrous and dumb to allow the Satan's narrative to affect us so deeply. Amen. Sure, I'm affected by death. One death is too many. I'm affected by the conditions of this nation. Yes. But I'm also affected by those who stand up, complain a lot, and do nothing. Hello. Who are you going to vote for this year, Pastor Kerry? Jesus. And who Jesus wants me to. And I suggest you do the same. All right, so let's look at this. Now, our life is hidden with Christ. So, are you born again? Then we're sitting with Christ in heavenly places. Then we need to have our priorities in order. One way to say it is our ducks need to be in a row. Can you say amen? So I'm going to give you your ducks. I'm going to show you what needs to line up according to Scripture so that you have a good idea what it is so you're no longer in the dark if you were in the dark about these things. Your first priority is God. God relating to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So in order to start off your Christianity, you need to meet with the God who created all this. First thing, first priority in the beginning of your day. If you have to grab a cup of coffee, if you have to sit up on the edge of your bed, you have to go to the restroom first, wherever you may be, you start talking with God first thing. Wife, husband, second. God first. You say, well... You can't be so religious and legalistic, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, son, sisters, brothers and sisters, if you don't start doing this, you'll become another casualty. And we don't want that to be. Right? How many know God's a little wiser than the enemy running around? He's a little wiser than you and me. So I like to meet with him first thing in the morning so I can get his wisdom. When I meet with him, you know what he does? He fills me calms my thinking down and begins to give me his thoughts. He shuts my flesh down so it doesn't rebel. He allows the peace of God to rule in my heart. So as it says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. You see? And then when I get up from that 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it doesn't have to be very long. I walk on in victory. Why? Because I am clothed with Christ. I'm filled with Christ. I have the angels around me. I have the name. I have the blood. I have the armor. I have the covenants. What does a devil have? Only the ability to talk you out of what you have because of a lack of discipline. We've got to line our priorities up. So God comes first. So we break down God meeting him with him first thing. Second of all, Meeting with him in the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. So when you get in the word, you're getting with God. So you have to be in the word a little bit every day. Not a, not a pocket promise only, but in the word. If you want to know where to go, we can show you where to go. Book of John's at first. Okay, so you find out how Jesus lives, acts, speaks, and get to know him better. So you get to know God through the word. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, it says, Study to show yourself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So you need to go after the word so that the false teachings about God won't seep in. How about this? Have you ever heard this one? The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Did you know that's not scriptural? 
but we all heard it. How do you know what's right and what's wrong if you don't get in the Word and study it? The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away your sin, but he doesn't give you a gift and then take it from you because you've been a bad boy. Hello. So we got to get to know God through his word. You got to get to know him through the Old Testament, through the history and the accounts of people walking with God. In the Old Testament, Messiah was not there yet. He had not died and rose again. So God dealt harshly with people that came against God's will. Okay, second of all, you got to get to know God, the Christ of the New Testament. He is the Savior. Not only does he dwell around you, not only is he for you, not only is he with you, he dwells in you. So there's a whole different set of scenarios God works out with his children in the New Testament. But you'll never get to know that if you don't get to know him through his word. But you got to get to church, brother and sister. You got to get down here in the front pews, taking notes, getting ready to go. Show yourself to be a student, amen, to study yourself to be approved. But oh gosh, are you referring to like a school? No, I'm not talking about secular school, teaching you a whole lot of do-nothings, know-nothings. I'm talking about sitting under the feet of Jesus like, G Mar like Mary did. Amen. Get under the feet of Jesus and understand how he breathes, how he eats, how he smells. Understand everything, how he feels, how he thinks about things. I had a guy the other day ask me, he says, well, what do you think about all this stuff you're going through? Of course, he wanted to get me to get, choose a side. You be careful choosing sides. The only side that you're on is God's. Can you say Amen. And, I, and he says, well, how do you feel? What do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And he says, I'm going to tell you. You ready to hear? And he says, yeah. I told him something that God told me to tell him. So profound, it took him five days to figure it out. He says, I feel like Jesus does. See, there's no side. There's no argument whether black lives, white lives, yellow lives matter, all that kind of junk. All that's a distraction to get people to fight amongst themselves so Satan can feed off of that energy and attack innocent people with it. See, he's a vampire. He sucks up all the strife and the hate and all that nasty stuff that comes sometimes out of Christians' mouth. And then he reverses it and turns it against them. Now, that's why Jesus said to walk in love because when you do, you cut the enemy's power right there. You shut him right down. It's nothing to work with. When Jesus said, hey, Satan, the prince of the world cometh, and he has, can find nothing in me. Can, he find, can Satan find anything in, in you that he can accuse you with? And if not, get with God on a daily basis. Get with God through his word. Now, the next thing that we must do in our priorities of putting God first. See, God first meeting with him, God first in his word, all part of God first. God first in praise, and worship, and adoration, and delight. You see, when we get before God in praise and worship, and, and we're supposed to show God how much we adore him. We're supposed to actually verbally and visually show that we adore him in the face of Satan. How about your life? Do you show you adore God? Are you still trying to work the plan and be everybody's friend? It doesn't work. How many know you can't play the field? How many know politicians try and they don't do very good either? No. We need to adore him. And then by adoring him, God wants us to delight in him. He wants us to delight. Well, how can we do that, Pastor? By praise and worship. Lord, I adore you. I praise and worship you. Hallelujah. Got a word. God just said, there are those that are looking towards your ministers just because they can play things and play music and they can do certain things. Get your eyes off them. Get your eyes back on Jesus because God has gifts in you he wants to perfect. If we're always emulating others and how special they are, we'll never find out special we are with God. Right. Woo, 
don't preach myself happy. It's getting foggy in here. I mean, the Spirit of God is really moving, not because I'm saying anything, because God wants us to know the truth. And the truth will what? My second point is, keep a heavenly mindset by your priorities. Please put God first. So not only do we have God first meeting with him, God first in his word, now God first praise and worship to delight and adore him. And then there's one other key. Everyone say, what is it, Pastor Kerry? What is the one key that I need to be a success? Die to your selfish control. Die to you running your life. Or I'm not supposed to make decisions. No, let God help you make decisions. Yes, you make decisions, but not without the counsel of God. Why? Because there's a trap laying out for you. How many has ever stepped in a trap? Maybe you haven't. Maybe, maybe you'll bring it down home. How many has ever stepped in the neighbor's dog dropping? Don't you? And then you tracked it all through the house. That's what Christians are doing. They're going up and getting all beat up and everything like that. They don't prepare themselves. They don't do all that. They're not looking to the author and the finisher of the prayer. And it's like they're walking around in dog doo-doo. Now, I'm not talking about you. You're above that. <laughs> I can just remember when I was a kid, my sister would always put me out, you know, and she'd go in and see all her boyfriends and everything like that. And so I'd be wandering around the yard. Guess what I would step in? <laughs> And, of course, I was young, seven years old, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, a lovely little kid. But I've been saved. All right, so let's go on. You can laugh it with me. All right, thirdly, remember, keeping Christ first and ourself last keeps us hidden in Christ in God. I'm going to say it again. You, I don't miss this. Remember, keeping Christ first, keeping God first, Seeking him, seeking him through his word, praise and worship, adoring, delighting, and dying to your selfishness and your self-last keeps us hidden with Christ in God. The key to success. You see, my success is different than your success. My call is different than your call. So God wants you to be very successful in your walk with him. So, so, so there's no competition with each other. So remember this. The key is to succeed is allowing God to steer your life. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, or mature adult sons of God. So guess what? You can't run by your feelings. Can you tell me why you can't run by your feelings? They're fickle. Yeah, you can get up and not feel saved. Are you not saved? You get up and not feel healed. Are you not healed? So the mind plays a lot of games. So control this. Don't let your mind wander away from you. You tell your mind to obey you and think what you want it to think. Amen. All right. If I'm going to think about cooking steak, I'm going to put my mind on cooking steak. Do you understand? And when I'm done, it's going to be good. Right? So that's how it works. Okay, so let's go on. My next point is, there are four keys to success in following God and putting God first. Number one, we already talked with it, but it's meeting God first thing, right? Proverbs 8, 17 is the scripture I want to give you. I have, it says, I love those who love me, and those who seek me early will find me. Seeking God first, right? I love what Psalms 5 says. It's actually a song. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. So Psalms 5 says it. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. Now listen to this. My voice shall you hear in the morning. Amen. Seek him in the morning. You'll find him early. Amen. How many's ever heard that, that silly worldly phrase, the early bird catches the worm? 
Amen. The one that sleeps in all day catches a cold. <laughs> I put that in for fun. <laughs> Don't catch anything that's not right. All right, so I love it. Second thing is we found out we got to follow him through the word. Matthew 11 says, come to me. And the word come to me. In the Greek, what does it mean? When you come to Jesus, do you just show up once? When it says, come to me, what is it actually saying? Come to me every day. Come to me continually. When you got a problem, who do we go to? Amen. When somebody's bothering me, who do we go to? When something is irritating you, what do you go to? Not to your neighbor, not to your wife, to God. And you'll find out he'll deal with it real quick. I'd much rather have that happy than me having to deal with things. All right, so we know, come to me all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then he says, take my yoke upon you. In other words, you've got to want to learn from me. You've got to take what I have given you and do it my way. Take my yoke upon you. When you're yoked up means that you have no more say. You let the one teaching you say. Hello. You be grasshopper. Okay? He be master. All right? So grasshopper, listen. Stop hopping about. Hello? <laughs> Amen. All right. So we also found out we delight in him. We adore him through praise and worship. Psalms 37, verse 3 through 5. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land that I have given you and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord and he also and to him and he will bring it to pass. Amen. Then finally, learning to surrender your selfishness every day so that God can control and guide and take the reins of your life. As James 3.17 says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, peaceable. See, when God takes over, he's pure, he's peaceable, he's gentle, he's willing to yield. If you have anything to say or you say ouch or whatever, God wants to work with you. He's full of mercy. How many know God's merciful? Full of good fruits. You want to be fruitful? You know a tree by the what? You know the tree by the? Don't go by or hang around people not producing anything but yuckiness. Amen. And when I work on my car, I wear gloves. You know, keep the grease off of me. When I'm working with people, I cleanse myself afterwards so that I don't get any boogaloos that they might have on me. I'm totally free, and so are you. So, delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Didn't that sound good? Yeah. Now, how many really believe God meant what he said? So, folks, we find ourselves we're having to do these responsibilities. God can't do these things for us. We do these things, and he does the rest. Say amen, somebody. Yeah. Now we need to understand what it means when Jesus said... It is finished. Do you know what that means? I guarantee some of you don't know all that it means. First of all, we know when Jesus said it is finished, it means all the demands of Adam's sin and the law's right to pay the transgression back, Jesus covered. He covered it all. So when Jesus said, it is finished, all the requirements, all the accusations that Satan has against the believers, no more. Amen. When Jesus said, it is finished, all of the attributes of God's very character and very being is established in the earth for you and I to maintain and to walk with and to enjoy. Yes. It is finished. But why are we whacking around and still fighting and still trying to run our life? If our life is finished and we have been set up, somebody died and rose again and left us an inheritance, and you are a multi, multi billionaire, then you better learn how to get your hands on it and learn not to let the enemy steal it from you. 
Don't you think that God in you is worth more than money? More than billions of dollars? Didn't Jesus leave you an inheritance? You think I'm thinking about having a little money on your plate now? No. How shallow. I'm talking about wealthy all the rest of eternity because of God. Huh? Hello? So how do we get to that place, Pastor Kerry? Already aligning it out for you. Meet with God first. Amen. How you doing on that? Well, if you're doing good, you'll find out your health, your strength is good. But if you're letting it slip, you're going to have temptations, you're going to have frustrations, you know. Hello? So actually, the devil can see where you're at, can he? He can look at us and see where our countenance is, how we're glowing or how we're not glowing. If we got a, a shadow over us because we're worried and speaking bad and doing weird things, you know well, you know how the scenario goes. So delight in the Lord, get filled with God. Can you say amen? And let go of controlling your life. Follow orders, obey. It is finished. So Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 7, listen. It is finished. So I want you to note that Jesus doesn't have to do any more work. It's complete. What we have to do is we have to take up the mantle of Jesus and walk with him. Say amen. amen. So Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 7. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love wherewith he had loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages, the years to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward you and I, toward us in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to display the favor of God by walking with him. So we have to sit down in his finished work. Two, we have to learn to walk. So it's sit, walk, and stand with God. We have to sit down in his finished work. We have to learn to walk with him as we learn his ways, Galatians 5, 16 says, This I say, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary, so that a believer can't do what he wants to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, the Bible says in Romans 8, Amen. Amen. You're not under that dictation. You're free. Amen. Thirdly, we need to stand in him. We need to stand up in him. We need to stand with him. My dad used to say, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So we stand up in Christ. I love what Ephesians 6 says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand. He didn't say kick. He didn't say spit. He didn't say spew a bunch of verbal stuff. He didn't say get on Facebook and tell everybody how you really feel. Come on now. I'm talking to you. Christians don't do that. You're being set up. Why do you say that, Pastor Kerry? Because you're being beat up. Wouldn't you rather have a little peace? Stop meddling when God didn't ask you to. Whoops, I'm talking to me. <laughs> Hello, can you smile up at me in the camera there? You know I'm talking to all of us. So, as God speaks to us, stand up in him, stand for him. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Amen. Amen. And of course, my next point, and this is my last point, and that is for us and as Christians, we have to stay focused. We have to stay focused. We know what the scripture says in 2 
uh, Corinthians 3, verse 18. It says the focus on the face of Jesus. Doesn't it? Can you close your eyes and see the face of Jesus? Close your eyes. If you see the face of Jesus bright and clear, raise your hand. I don't even have to close my eyes. I can see it. But see, how does that happen, Pastor Kerry? When you get used to being with God, like I'm saying, all you can see is Jesus. People say, well, you people that teach grace, I mean, that, isn't that a license for people to go out and do their own thing and ask God to forgive? No. You see, when you spend quality time with God, the last thing you think about is sinning. Last thing you think about is speaking evil of somebody. Last thing you think about is yourself. Why? Because that's all washed away by your spending time with God. And as you search the scripture, it describes all the beautifulness of God. And you're able to filter out what is of the Lord and what is of man's foolishness. And then as you delight in the Lord and you begin to adore him, God begins to impress in you his revelation, his insight, and you begin to pick up on the way he feels about things, the way he thinks about things, and it doesn't become you wondering how he thinks. It's suddenly you just know how he thinks. Why? Because he dwells in you and you dwell in him. You see, it is finished. But somehow Satan's convinced many Christians they take matters in their own hands. Is this blessing you guys? Amen. Are you learning anything from it? See, God really, I said in these last days, God, I want to speak to the body. I don't want to speak religion. I don't want to speak a bunch of nine steps to get a successful prayer in. Or what Greek word meant five different ways, so now you're confused. I want to tell you what God really wants in your life. He wants you to stand up in him. You see, as I stand, I'm going to stand up here on the camera for just a minute. As I stand up, I'm standing up in him. He's absolutely silhouetting me. Now, you looking at me by camera, you can see me. But Satan sees Christ around me. For in him we live, for in him we move, and for in him we have our existence. In him, in him, in him. Outside of him, you're going to have a lot of problems. Inside of him, you're going to have a lot of blessings. What you're doing, is it for him or is, is, is for you? See, we need to analyze those things in our time with God. Why? Because the things that we're failing at are the places that Jesus is in Lord. If you find there's something in your life that's habitual, that you keep doing over and over again, listen to me. This is what my pastor told me. There's a spirit involved somewhere. The spirit is working with that person so they're constantly creating this problem and don't know why they're doing it. That's a spiritual problem you need to address with God and cast it away from you. One of the things I had when I was little, a spirit would come and I didn't know what it was because I had no Christian training. I could sense that it would cause me to feel a certain way and do a certain thing. And, and I didn't know to rebuke it. Well, Christians today are still experiencing that. Look at your life. Is there something in your life that you need to work on? How many know that without God, we can't get her done? So just remember, ask God in there and hurry up so you don't look so bad. Yeah. Moving right along. Okay, I sure love you. So stay focused. So I started off in the beginning of this uh, um, live session. Eyes off the world. Can anybody tell me why? Because it's fluctuating. There's nothing there. Now, I'm not talking about you can't enjoy fishing, enjoy a good waterfall or a good painting or something that's wonderful. Keep your eyes off the world system. It's designed to fail and to irritate you. Two, eyes off of people. Can anybody tell me why? People will fail you. Listen, don't put your eyes on me. If you're looking for me to be your hero, you're failed already. I'm not your hero. Jesus is. Right. Well, Pastor Kerry, you're to be an example. Well, I am an example. Can you pick on any of my faults? Not without your own. You see? So get your eyes off of people. That includes the president or would-be presidents. Come on. Get your eyes on Jesus. Thirdly, eyes off ourselves. Poor me. I don't know if I could just get through this. 
Oh, I'm going through this. I'm, I'm. Listen, you don't get mad at me. Everyone say, we won't get mad at the pastor. How many times in your conversation do you mention you? How many times do you say, I, 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 I? Now, now I'm not trying to put you down. I just want you to listen to this. If you see and notice a lot of you, a lot of eyes in your conversation, you've got too much of you on your mind. Really, that's a real good way to measure how you're doing. Hello? Come on now. What was Satan's downfall? What did he say over there in the scripture? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. What did Nebuchadnezzar say? At the first of his reign and rule, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, said it was God that put me in this position. And then later on, he got all full of himself, and he says, it's me that's making all the decisions. And he turned into some kind of beast eating stuff in the field. Church, don't turn into a beast. Turn into a child of God. Can you say Amen. What is the mark of the beast, Pastor Kerry? That is when a human being becomes so animalistic in their thoughts and their views, they don't care who they hurt to get to the next meal or to the next promotion or to the next position of authority or the next position of an office of political importance. Come on, folks. We're living in a real evil world that's fallen has great stuff in it enjoy the great stuff but don't get poisoned by the apple by a bad attitude by not coming to church you better be in church all the time you need the words of eternal life not this church another good church but please don't go to church if all it is is entertainment sitting around sing-alongs and party hardy things. I know so many churches are like that. And if anything ever did happen, they would scatter so bad because we need good, solid leadership that know where they're going, know who they're going for, who they're serving, and are not moved so easily off the will of God. If you got something out of that, say, I'm a success. success. Going somewhere to happen. Every day. I succeed in Christ. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning, will you?